paranormal is all around us. You just have to recognize it. My name is Jeffrey Price. I'm one of the lead investigators with Michiana Paranormal Investigations. I have been a police officer in Northern Indiana since 2007. In 2012, myself and one of our former police dispatchers, Liz Brownbridge, discovered that we had one common interest, and that was the paranormal. We decided to form a local paranormal group in North Central Indiana that could help clients that were reporting claims of paranormal activity. Since 2012, our group has grown to over 15 members and includes senior investigators, historians, investigators with various experience, psychics, and video and audio technicians. Since we started, our team has traveled around the area in search of some of the most haunted locations with the same goal in mind on every investigation, helping people. In 2015, our team started conducting paranormal workshops and presentations, teaching the community on how to use and understand equipment and various techniques. Join us every week as we showcase some of our investigations, demonstrate equipment, talk with experts in the field of paranormal science, and go on location to show you some unique and potentially paranormal hotspots. We are Michiana Paranormal Investigations, and this is Haunted Michiana. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Haunted Michiana with Michiana Paranormal Investigations. My name is Jeff Price. This is actually going to be episode number two for us. We are at the WNIT studios in South Bend, Indiana. Um, we are Michiana Paranormal Investigations. We are a paranormal team that's based out of Mishawak, Indiana, which if you're not familiar with the area is North Central Indiana. Uh, we have a team of about uh, 15 different members, all having uh, various, various uh, backgrounds with different equipments, talents, techniques, everything. So what the show is, this is going to be a live studio show where we're going to have uh, two different segments. Uh, you're going to have the section where you're talking to me right now. We're also going to be speaking with one of our uh, guest speakers, talking about uh, his role in the science of paranormal, and then we're going to be doing an equipment—I'm uh, sorry—an equipment demonstration, uh, showing you some of the latest and newest innovations inside of paranormal. Um, a little bit about our group: we were founded in 2012 um, by myself and Liz Brownbridge. Um, at the time, uh, we were colleagues, and we always had this uh, interest in the paranormal field. And we always had this kind of running joke that we would love to start a paranormal group. Um, after about a year of talking about it, we actually decided to start it. Uh, and as time has gone on, we've grown, grown from two members all the way up to 15 people right now. And we've gone to a bunch of different places as you had probably heard during our opening credits. Uh, it was kind of interesting when we um, had our very first client. Uh, the running joke is kind of when we, were, uh, we got our first phone call to go out and actually explore a paranormal location, we got that phone call. It's kind of like watching Ghostbusters where uh, in the very first episode where they actually get a uh, phone call and everyone's like, yeah, we got one, and we, we, we did. And from there, we caught, actually uh, caught some of our great evidence from that very first investigation we went on in Mishawaka. And for all of us that have been here since, in the, since the beginning, we've had a complete and great love for it. Um, as you probably know, or if you have an interest in paranormal, whether you believe or you don't believe, uh, the field of paranormal um, has definitely taken off in the last few years. And we're here to offer our take on different, different and various um, methods, techno uh, technology, techniques, how we do things here in Michigan and show you that, you know, you may watch uh, shows that, you know, show haunted locations in other parts of the country, but there is a team here locally um, that does investigate this. So that is our main goal of our show here is we're gonna be just showing you, um, again, a bunch of different opportunities and techniques that you can experience uh, here in the area as well. So right now, we're gonna take it over to our first segment with Mandy, um, who's gonna be speaking with one of our guest speakers. Mandy? Thank you. Our guest today is Dr. Bob Gross. He is a uh earned a doctorate in edu education from Penn State University. Dr. Bob has been involved in the field of paranormal research for more than 30 years. His formal ex exposure to unexplained phenomenon began back in 1985. Um, Bob is currently a field investigator with uh, Scientific Minds Paranormal Investigations based out of Indianapolis. Thank you, Mandy. 
Uh, again, my name is Dr. Bob Gross, and even though I've been on several ghost hunts, I don't consider myself a ghost hunter per se. I'm a uh, artist who works in music by nature, but I'm a uh, scientist out of need, and, and specifically, I'm more or less a behavioral scientist. For this segment of Haunted Michiana, I've compiled a report uh, that's going to be giving those of you out there some food for thought uh, about becoming a paranormal investigator. One of the first things a beginning paranormal investigator ought to do is research the topic of unexplained phenomena. And when you do that, you should use things such that are known as primary sources. A primary source, for example, would include, but it's not limited to, things like autobiographies, emails, interviews, letters, minutes from meetings, film footage, recordings, official records, photographs, raw research data, speeches, and reports. Those, would, those items would be considered the primary sources for more or less doing your own research for the paranormal. Encounters, let's call them, with anomalies, which are rare objects and events, they do happen. When such chance meetings take place, excitement, euphoria, or even astonishment may result. While some people consider sneaking up on a ghost, a UFO, or Bigfoot uh, to be a paranormal experience, scientists like myself treat these exceptional phenomena as happenings that occur on the high end of the normal continuum. Um, do many people have paranormal experiences? Uh, I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, according to my research and uh, some recent surveys that were published around the year 2005 and 2006, more than 96 percent of the respondents of those surveys had at least one brush with a paranormal unexplained phenomenon of sorts. Seventy percent of those people had seen or heard been touched by something that wasn't there. And 42 percent of them felt that there could be such things known as haunted houses. That might seem like a lot of people observing things, Mandy, but um, a lot of those highly strange things are out there. And please keep in mind, since the time that Homo sapiens have been on Earth, only 4% of what's out there has ever been observed in the universe. We've only seen about 4% of what's really going on out there. Um, have universities ever conducted legitimate research um, studies related to the paranormal? Yes, they have. For example, up listed here, Stanford, Duke, Princeton University, Harvard University, and the University of Virginia, among others, have sanctioned paranormal research endeavors. Dr. Bob, have you are, are you are a seasoned researcher with, with over 30 years of experience studying human beings and they grapple with m the mysteries of the world. Right. <laughs> can you give us some I insights about so-called paranormal activities? Okay. I can do that, Mandy, but it's going to have to be just between you and I because <laughs> some of this stuff is confidential, okay? All right. <laughs> um, all right, so there's some recent, uh, here's, I'm going to, I put a list together of some recent uh, science-based factual information uh, I pulled together related to unexplained experiences. Science itself is a body of knowledge that is acquired through curiosity and studied using a structured approach. That structured approach is known as the scientific method. Observation is the very first step in any approach to using scientific methodology. There's nothing in the universe that does not possess energy or some energy form. The energy in the universe can't be created or destroyed. Now, I didn't say that. That came from Albert Einstein. As humans, we, re we receive and we transmit energy. Furthermore, our perceptions are thoughts triggered by external stimuli. Perceptions trigger electrical signals in the brain. Electrical signals are energy. 
Where does the energy go when we die? Where does it go? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but just, uh, I'm still working on that. But well, uh, for example, let's take a look at the Mayan people who lived about 2,750 years ago. The Maya buried their dead beneath the floors of their houses. Why they did that was to ensure th that they could control, have control over the spirits of their dead ancestors. You can imagine what sort of things went on back then when, under those type of conditions. Recently, a scientist from Wake Forest University, that the School of Medicine there, announced that the concept of death is actually a figment of our consciousness. More and more scientists today are maintaining that death is not the end. In fact, death may function more like a reset button than an off switch. Rather than just dying, you're rebooting. So this is, is more and more scientists are becoming buying into that. And if you think that's a little weird, not too long ago, theoretical physicists from the University of Oxford, they claim to have discovered circular patterns within the cosmic microwave of the, uh, the background in the universe. Those circular patterns might mean that space and time did not come into being at the Big Bang, but that instead our universe continually keeps uh, cycling through a series of big bangs. You have a big bang, an eon, another big bang, another eon, so you have these cir circular patterns forming. Some scientists theorize that a byproduct of those circular patterns may allow for residue energy in the universe. Now, if this is indeed the case, then the entities we have been calling ghosts might be manifestations of all of that energy. Residue or not, there may be more energy out there than we th ever thought was out there. Uh, so, or are we getting close to the time, Mandy? Um, no, we got but two minutes left, so why don't we uh, just tell me a little bit about um, what your current projects are. Okay, now again, these are confidential <laughs> because uh, currently uh, one project that I'm working on is a, an independent research study that's taking a look at how experiences with paranormal phenomena affect the human brain. And I'm actually finding some very interesting results. Uh, it seems as if the paranormal, if you have a, an encounter with a, a paranormal type of phenomenon, that your brain actually grows. And so this is one thing I'm investigating. Uh, also, I'm working on a, uh, a, a book. It's, it's a book in progress. And that book is entitled, The Nature and Value of Anomalous Experiences, The Need for Good Music and Real UFOs. So I, I'll be doing, it's, it'll be part of a series of books that'll take a look at uh, rare objects and events, so UFOs, ghosts, cryptids, and th that type of uh, phenomenon. Okay, very cool. Um, we're gonna head over to Jeff, Rob, and Liz, and they're gonna describe a little bit of our equipment and tell us how to ghost hunt on a budget. Thanks, Mandy. Thanks, Dr. Rob. Thanks, guys. Right now, uh, we're just going to give you a quick and um, brief introduction into um, some of the equipment we use. But first, I'm going to have Liz here, who's going to talk about um, some safety and some possible research ideas. Liz? Um, there's been a lot with the TV shows um, uh, coming out, some, some movies, some scary books. Uh, people are getting a little bit more into ghost hunting and... Uh, kind of what their curiosity, hey, they watch these people on TV, can I do that too? Um, and you can. Um, mainly, uh, I'm concerned with the safety and the research. If you're thinking about doing this, get somebody else to go with you. You don't want to go uh, around a cemetery or anything like that by yourself. So buddy up with somebody um, and do your, do your research about ghost hunting first. 
uh, the proper way to do it, how to listen to the EVPs and bring them up on your computer. There's different apps for that. Um, and then um, make sure that you always uh, get permission if you're going into a cemetery uh, or maybe an abandoned building, you always have to have permission first. Especially abandoned building, make sure that you are dressed appropriately, have a first aid kit, and also you need to let somebody know where you're at in case you get separated or something like that happens. Yeah, one thing I want to kind of touch about what Liz said is me being a police officer, uh, I have been called before where we've had um, people going places and trespassing and being places that they're not supposed to be or don't have permission to be at. And I can tell you from the other side of the law enforcement, make sure that you have the proper permission to be there. The last thing you want to do is hem up yourself because you're in a place that you did not get permission to be at. Um, and like Liz said, just make sure you be safe when you go out there. Um, so right, as you can see in front of us, we have a various array of different tools that you can use uh, while you're in, uh, going on a paranormal investigation. Some cost more than others, but remember, this is ghost hunting on a budget. So you want to keep in mind that while some of these uh, tools are a little bit pricey, um, you can get cheaper models, you, can, you don't need everything here, you can just use a couple things. And we're going to kind of just point out uh, a few of the basic ones. Later on in some episodes, we're going to go more in depth about some of the other tools we can use um, or about each equipment in, in more depth. But this is just kind of a quick overview of what we're going to do. Uh, Rob, you have some tools in front of you right here. You mind just kind of talking a little bit about those? <clears throat> yeah, some of these are a little bit on the higher end, um, I suppose, like 35 millimeter digital camera. This is invaluable. Uh, this one here is a little bit lower budget actually. This one uses a cassette, but it is still digital and it has night vision. Um, laser grids, laser grids are always awesome. Uh, you can set these up to use with the cameras to catch any movement that maybe you may not see with your eye. Um, and everything down to, uh, we even use dousing rods on occasion. And this is, you know, this goes these go way, way, way back. And it takes a little bit of technique, but it's something you can master if you keep on doing it. Um, one of my favorite pieces of equipment I just picked up this past year is this. Uh, it's an EMF meter, a geophone, and it takes the temperature. So it's taken the ambient temperature. It also picks up any magnetic field that might be around. And the geophone actually picks up any kind of movement there might be. So you can actually use a lot of these in conjunction with each other like the camera with the geophone or the camera with the laser grid so there's a lot of stuff you can do um, to facilitate getting the the uh, um, results you want so and some of the things i have in front of me right here um, this is what we call a k2 meter a k2 meter is a uh, device that registers electromagnetic frequency um, it is used in conjunction with an emf detector which is right here now these will run you anywhere between um, uh, 25 to 50 dollars depending on what your um, your budget is for but what these are, are used for is if you're in an area that there is uh, possible paranormal activity these will let you know that there is an, an electromagnetic field in the area sign that there is paranormal activity so investigators will take these if you watch a lot of the ghost shows the uh, k2 meter is a very common mm -hmm. tool that is being used uh, mm -hmm. currently you'll see them all the time and again the great tool you can get them on um, various uh, uh, online websites but it's a great tool to to have if you're out in the field the next one the digital recorder the digital recorder is used to capture what we call EVPs an EVP stands for electronic voice phenomena what that essentially is is a voice noise or anything recording that is picked up um, on the recorder but you don't hear at the time of the actual recording um, you can use uh, these uh, fancy uh, Sony recorders that run about 45 to 50 dollars a piece but a lot of people don't know that in your very pocket you probably have one already your phone most phones iPhones uh, droids all that kind of um, technology or any smartphone typically has a voice recorder on it and when you have that you can capture EVPs you don't need a digital recorder just to capture an EVP you can use this so you would just turn on your phone and just go into your uh, main function uh, to um, capture an EVP and all you do you just ask questions you don't have to be anything too specific you don't have mm -hmm. to be in a certain spot you can be anywhere 
just ask questions and then you go back, listen on, and then you're listening for things that you know you didn't hear at the time of the recording. Um, there's also a lot of new apps that come out that you can download that lets you um, experience um, a bunch of different phenomena. They have uh, night vision apps on your phone now, thermal vision uh, attachments you can use, which cost j like a fraction of what you're going to be normally paying for um, a flare. A, f a flare, mm -hmm. yeah, a flare gun, and it's a great tool. And a lot of people don't realize you have it in your pocket, so um, a great tool. Real quick here uh, before we wrap on this, I'm going to show you two other cameras we have here. This is our DVR camera. What the DVR camera is, it is a, essentially it's a, a security camera, but it's got, um, in the front here, it has LED lights um, that are built in that are IR lights, infrared lights. So in a normal shooting environment, these lights um, will not illuminate and your video will shoot uh, full color. But when it gets dim, the sensor in the camera will pick that up and it will sh uh, shoot over into a, a night vision mode. And so a lot of people will set these up um, with a DVR system and hook anywhere from two, three, four, five cameras up to it and sit at a remote station uh, far away and you'll be able to watch rooms. Uh, you can get sound attachments for them. Uh, it's a great tool to uh, keep an eye on things. And these don't run too much. You can get a, a whole complete DVR system for between 100 and 200 dollars, depending mm -hmm. on how much memory or hard drive space that you're trying to find. Or how many cameras you want attached? Exactly. To uh, the very last piece of uh, equipment I want to show you. This is one camera that we use quite frequently. This is a Canon XA10 night vision HD camera. Um, it has a the night vision LEDs built into it, the IR. Um, it records to a hard drive a, or a, a SD card on the uh, on the spot right here. It's a great tool, and that it records HD vision in 1080i. Uh, so if you are going to be doing an investigation, you want to make a, a paranormal mo uh, movie, anything like that, uh, this is a great tool. And uh, th these do run on the high end. They run about about a thousand dollars for one of these. But you can get cheaper models that still shoot 1080. Maybe they don't have all the bells and whistles that this one has for you know a couple hundred dollars. Um, but does have the night vision option for it. Um, you can still get ones that run tape, um, and there's a, just a ton of different options mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, cameras. But I think you know having the night vision cameras when we're on an investigation is definitely yeah. one of the greatest tools that you can have because there's something about capturing uh, night vision footage um, that really lets you see things that you can't see in normal shooting conditions. So these are uh, great, great tools. Um, but again, if you're going to try to keep it on a budget, um, your flashlights. Flashlight. Uh, there's different theories out there about um, if you uh, turn a flashlight a certain way and turn it on, um, it will respond back. Uh, if you check out some of our videos um, on our YouTube page, we have some demonstrations and also some investigations that will um, uh, demonstrate and talk about those as well. We also have motion detectors. You can get a motion detector that um, you can set up. You hook it up next to a, um, a DVR camera, and if the light pops on, you can watch the camera. So it's a great way to mm -hmm. see if there's something moving, something fell. It's a great way to detect it. That's the one that fell from the yeah. Make sure the if the ledge it, at uh, the State Theater. State Theater. If you want to watch one of our videos, you got to check out the State Theater from I believe September of 2014. We had one of these uh, fall off the ledge. That one. And <laughs> creepiest moment of my life, I think, that when we saw that because. You always see it, the stuff happening on TV, but when you're actually there and you experience it, it's quite interesting. But definitely, you know, it's a great stuff. It's a great starter kit. There's many tools you can go online um, and, and purchase, various outlets that do sell them. Um, well, that's all the time we have for today's show. We want to thank um, our guest, Dr. Bob Gross, coming in today to talk to you about uh, scientific methodology when it comes to the, uh, paranormal investigations. Uh, I want to thank Mandy, uh, Rob and Liz, as always. Um, for taking time while their schedules come out. Um, definitely want to thank um, WNIT TV for hosting us, uh, Michigan Access TV for uh, the facilities and uh, putting us on the air. Um, and make sure you always stay connected with us through social media via Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and definitely our YouTube page where you can hear, all of, hear and see all of our latest investigations. So again, thank you for taking time while your schedule to spend the night with us, and we'll see you real soon.